Good morning, YouTubers. Hey, uh, just rented this bin mover from the good folks at Flamin Rentals in uh, Fairview, Alberta. And uh, they were having some issues with it. And I wanted to move a bunch of grain bins. So I said, oh, I'm kind of half handy. Uh, could you let me take it and I'll, I'll be able to figure it out. Well, I got it home and I started working on it. And about four hours later, I finally figured it out. And I thought I was a little less handy. <laughs> but I just wanted to go through um, kind of everything as a bit of a tutorial just to make everybody's life a little easier, hopefully. If you haven't moved a whole bunch of grain bins, there's a few little things I do. Um, but just on this, this thing, it's a double battery system. And then this solenoid on the top is for the up. And the one on the bottom is for the down. And so this wire here is the positive to activate the down. And what was happening is it would go up. It would stand right up and then it wouldn't come down. And then if it did come down, sometimes it would get stuck on the way down. And so then I, I couldn't figure it out, but I would take, I took this solenoid off energized it and then if you stick like a piece of wire through it or a screwdriver tip on it when it's energized you can tell if it's magnetized and both of these stupid coils were magnetizing but the bottom plunger i ended up having to take it out and once you took it out and relieved the pressure you could hear it tick tick you could actually see it move inside that plunger so I knew it would work. So anyhow, again, the whole three to four hours of screwing around with this, I finally brought my power supply box up here and you can put 12 volt current. So I run 12 volts uh, to, to the power supply. And what I didn't pick up on right away is the current was reading 0.5 of an amp. And you could hear it ticking it would magnetize the coil, everything like that. But as soon as there was pressure on that plunger inside, when the plunger was inside and the weight of the trader coming down, it would not activate that plunger. And finally, after a couple hours, I thought, you dummy, turn up the current because the current had been backed off as a gate. And so I turned it up as much current as this thing would allow and it'll allow say 10 amps through it and that solenoid when it's activated it draws 1.87 amps and so then i thought to myself and and then it would work like everything on the trailer would work it would come down and so then i realized it was a current so then i run uh the booster cables and in the truck here, I have my battery charger. I have a spare battery in case I need it and the generator to run this. And then these are just hooked to the booster cables, the battery charger. So I can run it on 30 amps. And then I just run these booster cables over the tailgate and I hook it on the battery. And all the problems went away. So if you have trouble with this, the very first thing you should do is grab a set of booster cables and hook them to the battery and just run them to either another truck, pull it up beside here so you can test it and or have another battery in the back of your truck. And if you have a lot of bins to move, um, I would recommend having a charger or something to make sure that these two batteries stay fully charged because if they drop just a little bit, there won't be enough current to get to these solenoids to activate them so long story short that's what it is if you need to troubleshoot you can at least take these coils off make sure they uh, are magnetizing and uh, hopefully you won't have any grief so i'll try to edit this a little bit as i go otherwise it'll be a long video i'll stand this up and then i'll say a few things um, as i go to hopefully help you guys out Okay, I just got the generator running now. I got the booster cables over, hooked to the battery charger, uh, like I said, and then they're just hooked to the battery so that I don't deplete it. Now I backed up to the bin. The straighter you are to the bin with your truck and trailer, the better. Um, I've used this thing quite a bit, so I'm a little bit crooked, but I kind of think that I can 
maybe get away with just a little bit more. So we'll give her a try here. Oh, and one tech tip while you're doing this, as you'll see when I stand this thing up and them legs get almost kind of way past the 45, they're almost to an 80 degree, the bottom of the legs will start digging into the dirt and you need to have your truck in neutral because it, it draws the truck back just an inch or two. And if you don't, it'll, it'll really work this thing and it'll make that thing dig into the dirt instead of just riding up on top of the dirt. So you'll do yourself a big favor by just putting the truck in neutral if you're on flat ground. I guess just uh, I'll add in my little safety claimer now. Of course, when you're using this, it's your responsibility um, for tying the, the bin down securely and for checking your route for power lines. And this, I've actually moved a 21 foot grain dryer off this site and I did actually have to call ADCO because I go underneath uh, two, three phase lines. And so they come and check the height and so I know I'm kind of good for doing all this stuff. Um, you'll see on the trailer uh, right there is one tie strap and then one back there. When you stand this thing up, you'll see me, um, you'll see me just tie down on the front one. Um, and not tie down on the back one because I'm only moving three miles. But again, uh, that's up to your discretion and it's your responsibility. So, okay, here we go. Okay, now this is where I stop for a minute and I'm looking at them two spikes in the back that are the legs that go underneath the bin. So you can see they're not quite touching the ground on the bottom of the legs. And as it goes up, it's going to make them bite. So this is where I'm going to put the truck in neutral. And then, well, I'm actually going to back up a little bit first and then leave the truck in neutral for the rest of the lift. And I know with the skids on this bin, there's one that's in the center of the door underneath the bin. And then on either side, about two feet. So I need to make sure that them two legs on the bottom don't go underneath of a skid. I want them to go in between the skids. So I'm gonna back up with it at this height so I know how close I can get to the bin. I'm gonna check my skids so I make sure I don't have to move over a couple inches either way. And then I'll finish the lift. And when I finish the lift, that's when the truck is gonna be in neutral as it, it gets to the dirt so it can just pull the truck back that couple of inches and not fight it. Should be pretty close. Hopefully, it'll work. Okay, here's the deal this bin is on 3 by 12 planks. You can see the other one I loaded this morning already. So, I want to be I want to be underneath the floor with them spikes, like that spike right there. But I don't want to be so low that I'm digging into that first uh, three by 12 plank you can see there. So I have to just check it, make sure I'm not going to poke the bin, that I'm underneath the floor of the bin, but not too, too flat with that thing that I'm going to be hitting the ground and hitting that skid. So I want to be over top when I get in underneath the bin, then that's when I'll finish standing up the the rest of the lift uh, to tie it around the bin kind of thing. So if you see me doing that, that's what that's about. Okay, so it's looking good. I'm gonna back up another foot or two, and then I just need to check and make sure that everything's looking good for underneath the floor. tight on the one skid this is where it is nice with uh two guys i have the hired man showing up here in an hour and he can at least stand there and guide me you can do this with one guy two guys just makes it that much better 
Okay, this is the part I said I should have been over that way a couple inches. So I'm just going to do that off camera, readjust, get over just that two inches, and then I'll miss that one skid because I'm just bumping up against it right now. Okay, so I moved over an inch. It was, wasn't much at all. And then I just had to tip the legs up just a little bit because I kept hitting that uh, three by 10 with the spike. I kept bumping into it. So I just pit and then it slid right up over top of it. So we're good to go now. And you can see how up on the top, it's pretty tipped away from the bin. And we're a good couple of feet away. So now I know I'm over them three by 10s. I'm gonna stand, finish this standing up against the bin. And then you'll see me You'll see me tie it, tie it off. Okay, you can see even with the magnets how it wants to droop down, but that's more than good enough for securing it. So I just gotta finish tightening it. So there's the magnet holding the strap up there. And then I have another magnet there. So that makes, makes life easy when you're by yourself. So you're not trying to push the strap up with a two by four or a stick or anything else. So. Oh, yeah. Okay, so she's all tied off and then I'm just going to start pulling the bin down and uh, make sure everything's kind of the way we want it. when the bin come over center that strap went loose so for the ride home I'm going to uh, just tighten it up and then uh, I only travel at 40-50 kilometers an hour and again it's only a three mile ride uh, to get home so okay and I just shut the generator off I'll disconnect the 
booster cables for the ride home. And then as soon as I start lifting, I'll video again and show you, hook everything back up so I can keep them batteries charged. Okay, we're back in the main yard and we're just gonna stand this up. Uh, so same thing, I'm on flat ground here. I'm gonna put the truck in neutral right away so that when them back legs dig into the dirt, it's not gonna have to fight itself uh, to pull, pull it the rest of the way up. Okay, my bad, don't do this. When you start to lift, it's good to lift all the way and not do what I did and stop right there. But one of the things that you should do is loosen that strap a little bit because when it stands up, it's gonna be so uber tight that it's gonna cause you grief to get it off. So I should have done that when it was laid flat, totally forgot. So that's the only reason why I stopped like this, not to think deep. it a whole bunch just enough so there's a little slack and you'll see when it stands up it'll it'll go tight again when I loosen that strap you just make for darn sure that that clasp on there like the locking mechanism is back locked on there because if if you come over center and that wasn't it would just zing and go flying and i'm sure you would you would not do your grain bin any favors so okay so we're sitting flat all i gotta do is undo the strap Okay, I won't bore you with the rest. I'm just gonna fold it down and head for the next one. Uh, hopefully this uh, helped somebody at least. Take care and have a good rest of the day. All right, bye now.